right, guys, so at this point, you should have a sphere that is shaded in whatever color you guys chose. So you did not have to choose green. Um, you know, yours might be red or it might be purple or blue, but obviously you would use the opposite colors underneath. Uh, but you should at this point have a sphere and maybe it's not perfect, but that's, there's a reason we have three more spheres to do. So you guys can get extra, extra good at this. All right. Um, we're going to head into our kind of our background sky area here. And then obviously our table ground. Um, so first what I want to do is cause I want to let it just kind of dry is I'm going to go ahead and just do my my background and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually paint my background yellow quick and I'm gonna go ahead and use my bigger brush um, so if I obviously want my background to be a different you know color obviously I'm using the, the complementary color so if I'm using yellow as my background that would mean my eventual color is going to be purple and again loosen up paint a little loose you know go around your edges nice and clean this is where you know if you use a little bit of water on your brush it'll pull a little smoother and go ahead and, and fill in that upper half there You're just gonna put it in a flat color for now, back there. And obviously we have to let that dry. You should have a background there. Oop, got my brush. All right, then we're gonna go ahead and paint the, the bottom, all right? Now this is where when you're looking closely at your photo, all right, you're gonna notice there is a shadow that we need to put it, which makes the, the sphere have a ground to it and it'll make it look real three dimensional, all right? So the biggest mistake people do with shadows is they just paint in like a black blob right here and then it really doesn't flow with your painting at all. And if you guys notice, I didn't give you guys the color black at all. We're actually gonna paint all of these without using black um, because you actually don't need it unless you're really outlining something um, or going with a black and white painting then black really, you don't need it. You can use the colors and color theory to kind of create your darks and lights, all right? So I eventually am gonna, the, 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 the ground's gonna be a little bit different, all right? Um, we're not gonna lay in a color and then let it dry and paint over it. We're gonna kind of do it all in one quick setting and that's how you're gonna get it to have the shadow kind of feel like it is part of the painting, all right? So I'm gonna go with a red, all right? You can kind of choose um, whatever color you want, as long as it's not the same color as your sphere um, or your background, right? So obviously you guys can choose. There's really no right or wrong way to do this as long as it's not the same color as your background um, or the same color as your sphere. So I'm gonna go with red. And I'm gonna paint fast because I don't want the paint to dry. And I kind of go around that edge. And if you go on your table, that's fine. We have sponges. Um, you can clean that up at the end of class. Now, while my red is wet, all right, I am going to kind of clean off my brush a little bit and I'm actually gonna grab a little of the yellow and I'm just gonna quickly kind of go in. Now, this is a table, all right? And because it's not a sphere, I don't need to paint round anymore. And we don't actually want to paint around like that. We want to change our direction and go more horizontal with our strokes so that you can create the separation between the shapes. So the sphere we painted kind of around the highlight. Here, I'm kind of just throwing in some yellow. Um, and that's just because I wanted to add a little bit of something to my color so it's not just flat red. You know, it's still gonna read kind of reddish orange, all right? Just throwing that in a little bit. Now, while I'm sitting here and it's still a little wet, this is when we're gonna do the shadow, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use that complementary color. So I'm gonna use a little green because the red is there. And what I'm gonna do is while it's wet, it should mix and make even a darker kind of color. And I'm gonna look at my picture and really try to kind of hit that shape 
You can see the shadow comes over and kind of wraps up around here. If it goes off your paper, that's fine. But while you got, the key is to do this while it's wet, and then you're gonna be able to create it a little bit more of a vibe, like it actually belongs on there versus painting it when it's dry and it sits there. All right, and then if you wanna get fancy, you just take a little of that green, and maybe you give this table a little bit of wood grain, or just a little something going on. And that's kind of it for the bottom. All right, so now I'm just gonna end up hitting up that top half. So it was yellow, which means if you look at the color wheel, uh, purple is above that. I didn't wait quite long enough, it looks like, because my yellow is still a little wet, but that's okay. All right, so I'm just, I'm gonna go around again. I'm gonna end up going back sideways um, and do it and shaping it in a little bit better. But I wanna make sure I get a clean line around the sphere. And then because we went horizontal down here, you know, it's good to paint more vertically than in your background, and that'll help separate that from your table and from your sphere. So the sphere we went round and round, table we went sideways, and now we are gonna paint more vertical. And I'll probably end up doing another layer of this, all right? You guys are gonna find out pretty quickly that yellow and purple is probably the worst combo. All right, so I got that right out of the way. But you might have to do a couple layers to get it to where you want it to look dark or something back there. But yellow and purple just don't, don't mix very well together, that's for sure. I'm just gonna spend a couple of seconds here, kind of smoothing some stuff out. And I'll probably end up doing one more coat here in just a second once this dries, so it gets a little bit more purpley. Um, and some of you are probably like, well, why do we underpaint it then? Um, and the idea, guys, again, is it just has a little more richness to your painting, all right? When you just paint a flat color on white, it looks very just unfinished, average, and kind of almost just not done. And I think when you guys take a little extra time and you just do those layers, uh, it doesn't take you that long. And again, it ends up making your painting even more vibrant. All right, and that's the goal. So that is underpainting.